Venezuela accepts to be a guarantor in the peace process between the Colombian state and the National Liberation Army after President Gustavo Petro's request. The president of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, addressed the regional parliament in Strasbourg, northeastern France. A collective security treaty organization mission led by the Secretary General Stanislav Zas will travel to Armenia in order to evaluate the situation in the region. From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is from the south. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. On Tuesday, President of Venezuela, Nicolás Maduro Moros, accepted Colombia's proposal to be a guarantor in the peace talks with the ELN. Yesterday, there came a letter from President Gustavo Petro of Colombia proposing that Venezuela accept the character of becoming warrantor of the negotiations and peace agreements of the Colombian government with the ELN, and I told President Gustavo Petro and Colombia that once again, as did Commander Chavez in his time to guarantee the peace agreements that were then signed and that I had to participate as warrantor, once again President Gustavo Petro and Colombia will say Venezuela accepts the character of warrantor of the negotiations and the peace agreements of Colombia with the ELN, and we will put our best will in the name of God Almighty Father and for the total peace of Colombia. President Nicolás Maduro likewise affirmed that peace in Colombia is peace for Venezuela and the entire region. And in this I carry the voice of all the people of Venezuela. Of the 6,200,000 Colombians living in Venezuela, Venezuela is committed to peace, security and stability of Colombia. And the peace of Colombia is the peace of Venezuela, is the peace of South America, is the peace of the whole continent, and we will go there, and for this we will dedicate all our effort and all our work. Now we move on to other topics. Lower gas costs slow U.S. inflation for a second straight month in August, but most other prices across the economy kept rising, as evidence that inflation remains a heavy burden for U.S. households. Consumer price rose 8.3 percent from a year earlier and 0.1 percent from July, but the jump in core prices, which exclude volatile food and energy costs, was especially worrisome. It outpaced expectations and ignited fear that the Federal Reserve will boost interest rates more aggressively and raise the risk of a recession. The government said that businesses are still raising prices in response to the robust consumer demand. Inflation is higher than many U.S. US citizens have ever, ever experienced, escalating families' groceries bills, rents, and utility costs, among other expenses. Cuba's President Miguel Diaz Canel said that the nation is ready to hold a popular referendum on the family code next September 25th. Through his Twitter account, the Cuban president invited citizens to participate in the polls and said that it would be a day of celebration for the nation. In addition, he said the new legislation was not made to design or assume a family construct tied to any own person's ethical or religious convictions. Provincial governors headed by Diaz Canel discussed the preparations for the celebration of the popular referendum in which voters will have to decide whether to approve the family code, a law considered of extraordinary importance for society's development. On Tuesday, the Colombian military announced it has captured six Brazilians who were illegally extracting gold in the Amazon jungle using four dredges that were destroyed. Since late August, the military forces have destroyed 12 machines, including the four that were located in the last hours in the vicinity of Purete River in the Department of Amazonas. According to General Galindo, the Brazilians detained apparently will be at the service of the armed group Comandos de la Frontera, an organization formed by former guerrillas and paramilitaries that emerged in 2020. The operation is part of the offensive ordered by the President Gustavo Petro under the directive I legal dredge found dredge dynamite. 
The government of Colombia set among its priorities the care of the Amazon, given the, advan the advance of deforestation that has destroyed 7,018 square kilometers of forest, mainly in that region that extends over nine countries. The Federal Court of La Plata in Argentina authorized the departure from the country of 12 crew members of the Venezuelan plane of the M-Trasdor airline held at Ezeiza for the last three months. The ruling will define in 10 days the procedural situation of the Venezuelan and Iranian citizens who were part of the crew of the M-Trasdor airplane and confirm the lifting of the prohibition to leave the country that benefit part of the original 19 crew members of the aircraft. The measure ordered Judge Federico Villena to expedite and conclude all the pending proceedings. The definition of the procedural situation and of the restrictions imposed on persons and things. The notification confirms the assigned scope of the prohibition to the other seven crew members whose defense said that the chamber will have to review some measures. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. On Wednesday, the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, addressed the regional parliament in Strasbourg, northeastern France. During her speech of the State of the Union and accompanied by the Ukrainian First Lady Olena Zelenska, she pledged more aid to Ukraine and assured that the European Union will not lift the sanctions against Russia and stress the bloc have been up to the conflict in Ukraine. In her speech, von der Leyen failed to address the rise in food prices in European countries, a crucial issue that at a time when the bloc sees the rise due to inflation. However, she addressed issues such as the lack of personnel in specific labor areas and assured that education is a priority. In the energy issue, she referred to the creation of reserves of some minerals such as lithium. Hungary's right-wing government has issued a decree which will require doctors to present women requesting an abortion with fetal vital signs, an obligation that tightens the country's relatively liberal abortion rules. In a statement on Monday, the Interior Minister said that nearly two-thirds of Hungarians associate the beginning of a child's, child's life with the first heartbeat, and that modern equipment can detect heartbeats early in pregnancy, which can provide more comprehensive information for pregnant women. Hungary's nationalist government, led by Prime Minister Viktor Orban, portrays itself as a champion of traditional family values and has offered significant tax breaks and subsides for families that have multiple children in an effort to increase the country's declining fertility rate. Abortion have remained largely unchanged since it was legalized in 1953. The new decree enters into force on September 15th. And the president of Serbia, Aleksandr Vucic, warned about the imminent risk of an armed conflict in Kosovo. During a special session of the Serbian parliament, President Vucic pointed out an increased presence of Pristina's special police force in northern regions of Kosovo and Mitoja. The president warned that the crisis is not created by the Serbian side and warns about the approaching danger in the region, so that his nation faces significant security changes and challenges. The special session in Belgrade is taking place amidst a climate of constant pressure from the West on the Serbian government to recognize the self-declared Republic of Kosovo. A collective security treaty organization mission led by the Secretary General Stanislav Zas will travel to Armenia in order to evaluate the situation in the region. The decision was made at an extraordinary session of the CSTO Collective Security Council on September 13th. Participants of the session discussed the aggravation of the situation in certain areas at the Armenian and Azerbaijan border and ways to provide assistance with resolving the situation. Besides the organization's secretary general, its chief of staff, Anatoly Zidorov, and representatives of the CSTO member states will take part in the mission. They will be tasked with evaluating the situation and preparing 
preparing a thorough report to be presented before the heads of state at a regular session of the CSTO Collective Security Council. The 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly opened on Tuesday with a call to world leaders not to let differences prevent them from seeking solutions to the most urgent problems of the planet. Zizaba Karazi, the president of the body, reflected on the uncertainties and geopolitical tensions. The issue of climate and future challenges also featured in his speech. In this regard, he pointed out that the water crisis could become the next major threat to humanity. For his part, the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, regret that there was no progress on the issues raised in the last assembly. In examining and overlooking the global context, the mention, he mentioned the conflicts like climate change and a broken global financial system. The United Nations was created out of the ashes of war and destruction with the intention of being a well of solutions, responding to humanity's most pressing challenges, demands that we work together and that we reinvigorate inclusive, networked, and effective multilateralism and focus on that what unites us. It is our mission to come together when there, is, uh, there are disagreements and to build bridges when there are deep divides. Addressing common challenges will require continued solidarity as we demonstrate the great promise and potential of this organization. The United Nations is the home of cooperation, and the General Assembly is the life within that home. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so stay with us. Welcome back. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi emphasized that security in the Caucasus region is very important for Iran and explained that the situation and developments in the region are constantly being monitored because another war cannot be tolerated. In a phone call he received from Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pazinyan on Tuesday, Raisi expressed his concern over the ongoing tension in the region, which is going through special circumstances and stability has not been achieved. Raisi said the signatories of the tripartite ceasefire declaration should abide by its provisions and avoid any action that could provoke tensions in the area. The Iranian president spoke out on the influence of Israel in the region, stated that its presence is a threat to the entire zone. Raisi also said that the historical borders of Iran and Armenia are the cornerstone of prosperity, rapprochement and security in the region, and Tehran is determined to continue cooperation in all fields for the benefit of prosperity and stability. And the bodies of five people were recovered after a four-story residential building collapse in Jordan's capital on Tuesday. Authorities said, adding that 14 more were rescued, but others remain trapped. Security spokesperson Amir al Starawi said civil defense forces were being supported by teams from the Regional Security Command and the Gendarmerie, adding that efforts to save more were ongoing. Rescue workers could be seen digging through the collapsed rubble as emergency vehicles gather outside the site of the accident. Prime Minister Bishar al kazawe inspected the damaged building along with the Ministries of Interior, Health and Information. Government spokesperson Faisal al-Shabul told reporters at the site that Kazawe had ordered the mayor of Amman and other officials to investigate the cause of the collapse. The head of the United Nations Integrated Transition Assistance Mission in Sudan, UNITAMS, Walker Pertes, said that the longer the political paralysis will last in the African country. As a political stalemate continues, the human rights situation has also not improved. Since my last briefing here, 20 protesters were killed and at least 1,700 injured. I've more than once deemed it necessary to publicly condemn 
the excessive use of force by security forces, as well as their targeting of health facilities and medical staff. Syria affirmed that it will spare no effort to guarantee a dignified, safe and voluntary return of the displaced and refugees to their homes in the areas liberated from terrorism. A return that Damascus denounces Washington and its allies are making conditional on a political change that serves their interests in the Arab country. From Damascus, our correspondent Hisham Wanas with the story. El canciller de Siria, Faisal al-Megdad, durante su reunión con el alto comisionado de la ONU... Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal al-Megdad, during his meeting with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, reaffirmed Damascus' interest in the return of Syrians to their homes and expressed readiness to cooperate with the UN to achieve this goal, far from politicizing the issue. These statements are in line with the Syrian position announced at the International Conference on the Return of Syrian Refugees held in Damascus in 2020 and the subsequent four joint meetings of the Syrian-Russian ministerial bodies to facilitate this return. All Syrian government institutions, including ministries, provincial governments and other entities are working tirelessly to complete the rehabilitation of infrastructure and the restoration of services to ensure the right conditions for the safe and dignified return of refugees to the liberated cities, towns and villages. The 1.5 million Syrian refugees in Lebanon, like the Lebanese, are suffering from the repercussions of the unprecedented political, social and economic crisis in the country of the Sidars. Despite the UN's rejection, the Lebanese authorities proposed a plan for the monthly return of 15,000 Syrians to the country, a plan that Beirut says Damascus welcomed and expressed its willingness to receive all those who wish to return with a commitment to provide them with aid, services, housing, medical care, education, and more. Lebanon is pressing for a solution to the refugee problem, which it considers to be a major burden in the current circumstances of economic crisis. And for this reason, the UN High Commissioner for Refugee Affairs, Filippo Grandi, is currently visiting the region to discuss the issue, although I believe it is difficult to reach an agreement, since even Western countries are using this issue as a political pressure card. Contrary to the Western version, Damascus claims that it prioritized the creation of conditions for such a return, including the establishment of 480 temporary reception centers throughout the country, the rehabilitation of infrastructure in liberated areas, the issuance of amnesty decrees and the approval of procedures to facilitate and simplify procedures in border areas. Actions which, despite the difficulties caused by the war and the blockade, have facilitated the return to their homes of more than one million refugees abroad and nearly five million of the seven million internally displaced persons in the last three years. Telesur English continues to grow. Its signal now reaches Europe. You can order it from your cable dealer or tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on the screen are in place since July 1st. Quite soon, further changes will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now, more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other farther away nations. This news multi-platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemonic media's narrative and our faithfulness to our audience. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. And you can also follow us on our TikTok account at Telesur English, in which you will be able to see news in different formats, news updates, and more. For Telesur English, I'm Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.